70% of the world's rhino population lives here, in South Africa. But each year, hundreds of rhinos are lost to poachers, who kill them for their valuable horns. The horns are hacked off, smuggled abroad, and then sold on, usually as traditional remedies. Despite increased security measures, 2013 was the worst year yet for rhino poaching. I'm Gilri Durabi here in South Africa's Kapama Reserve, where a team of conservationists are fighting back by spoiling the poacher's bounty. The Rhino Rescue Project is a specialist team of conservationists with an innovative idea to combat rhino poachers. I'm standing by with Lorinda Hearn, who heads the project as the team helicopter scouts the 13,000 hectares of the Kapama Reserve in search of the day's first rhino. The Rhino Rescue Project's goal is to spoil the horn for poachers. With the rhino sedated, holes can be drilled into its horns, a painless procedure for the animal. Then a set of valves are attached. The valves are connected to a pressure pump, which infuses the horn with a dye. What is particular about this dye? It's the same kind of dye that's used in the banking and cash and transit industry to stain stolen banknotes. So you can't bleach it, burn it, chemically remove it. Once it's in this, this horn, um, it's basically ruined for any kind of ornamental use. Hmm. What about ingesting and using it for medicinal purposes? The cocktail that we infuse along with the dye uh, is 100% safe for the animal, but toxic to humans if they were to ingest it. So it serves a dual purpose. The internal structure of a rhino horn is made of tiny fibrous keratin channels, so the dye will rapidly infuse the entire horn. The team also collect DNA samples from horn shavings and tail hair, as well as inserting microchips into both horns and the animal's body. Uh, 67. 67. That's it. A large rhino horn can sell for close to half a million US dollars on the black market. Its value is so high that even dehorning rhinos isn't enough to protect the animals from poachers. Often we found that when farmers have dehorned their animals, those animals still get poached because the most weight, of course, lies in this bottom part of the, of the horn and that's how it gets sold. They take whatever they can and yeah. that's why sometimes you even lose calves um, in poaching incidents because even though the calf only has a, a small horn, it's so extremely valuable that they're willing to, to kill them just for that. Although it looks very dramatic, the red pinkish liquid oozing out is the dye itself, it's not blood. I just wanted to show you this from your procedure actually. So that is untreated horn material and then once it's been treated it goes this pinkish kind of colour and if you smell it you can smell that there's quite a strong... Chemical smell. That's it. If a human ingests a horn that has been treated, what happens to them? Mild symptoms, headaches, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, more severe symptoms, convulsions and, and um, potential nervous symptoms. Uh, so it can, it can get quite, quite severe. So that's 60,000 US dollars uh, per kilo on the black market. That's nothing, nothing nada. That's okay. So that's the whole point. That's the point, horn devaluation. If we can remove the value from the horn, we can vest it back in the live animal where it belongs. Uh, Sorry guys, I'm going to cut you short. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. Can you move back to the vehicles, please? Thank you. When the infusion is complete, the team administers a fast-acting antidote to the tranquilizer. Now it's known that when the rhino wakes up, 
it suddenly snaps and it charges. That's why we've got to get out of the way because this could be a very dangerous time. All right, here we go. The Rhino Rescue Project is a not-for-profit organization which has been traveling across South Africa in a race against time to treat as many animals as they can. The demand for animal parts is increasing steadily, and so is the damage it's inflicting. In 2011, West Africa's black rhino was poached to the point of extinction. The trade in animal parts devastates and it decimates species. If we throw rhinos under the bus and we're willing to just let them go, it will be an eternal shame to the human race. It's our duty to take care of the problem. There's two of them. Two rhinos. As we approach the next tranquilized rhino, the team needs to chase its calf away, which has not been tranquilized and may charge. Did you see that they gently slap it on the bum first? Um, to okay. see whether the, uh, whether the anesthetic has indeed worked. This is a very big horn. But she is a beautiful rhino. Look at that face from here and that horn. <laughs> it looks almost prehistoric, doesn't it? It does, it really does. They are so docile and they are so gentle and they can hardly even see you. Well, they are the sweetest things. They're having a hard time convincing this mother to just rest for a while while they do the procedure. She's worried about her calf. Very understandable. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's so amazing to be so close and to see the horn and to think this right here is causing a huge international trade and so many problems. And it's based on a complete myth, the myth that this horn contains some sort of medicinal value, when really it's essentially no different to your own finger fingernails. And then, of course, the one of the most famous myths that it actually cures cancer is completely bogus. Mm. Does the whole crisis just baffle you? It, it does, but obviously it's, it's more disturbing than it, than it is baffling because we are literally hemorrhaging animals. How often do you hear that there's been poachers on the land? Is that is it something? It's basically you hear a daily life? thing. Really? Yes, yes, for this area, so they're killing more than uh, the number of females that can produce calves per year. Hmm. Yeah, because I don't think people understand how serious it is with the rhinos. When Rhino Rescue Project first approached you, you know, with the helicopters and the tranquilizers, what did you first think? Once we understood what the process entails, so we really thought it was going to work. Uh, yeah, these guys try and make a difference. Yeah. The treatment of the rhino horns may be spoiling the poacher's bounty, but for Lorinda's plan to work, word needs to get out. Hello. Hi, I'm Guillory. Obinel. Nice to nice meet you. you. What's going on here? Kaleri, this is basically the sign that we're putting up on the fence line. Mm -hmm. And it says, warning, rhino horns on this property are contaminated with toxins and should not be handled or consumed by humans. And then most important is this picture down here for people that cannot read. It's a clear picture, there's a rhino, there's the horn, it's red, there's poison. If you touch it, you're touching the red and it's dangerous. So if they just come in to drive past and see, are oh, there perhaps rhinos, they'll immediately see the signage and they'll say, there's a bigger risk than normal because we have a risk of being shot and then at the end of the day, they cannot use the horns. So this works really well in conjunction with the work you've already been doing Definitely, for many yeah. years. Yes, but this is another tool that's assisting us to make it the rhino horn um, uh, not, not lucrative for the poaching. Another sign going up. Thank you very much, Jay. 
I think you're going to reach the top ones better than I am. I see here it's been translated into an Asian language. Which one is that? It's Mandarin and Chinese because according to information, that's where the most rhino horns are going to the Asian countries. And I think that's to also to warn the end consumer. How would the consumer have the opportunity to see this sign? If that, they are, you know, in China or Vietnam or wherever. With the organized crime syndicates that are involved, they, they will be investigating this. You can be sure that they're going to take a picture send it away so this poster isn't just for the area you're really hoping this goes worldwide the more people who can take notice of this the, the better at the end of the day albi wanted to take me to the hudspread center for endangered species where the impact of poachers is all too visible Poachers came in, they chemically immobilized the animals. They cut off the horns. Another animal died due to wounds and due to the drug. It was horrific to see them and to find them in the state which we had found them. Would you say the poachers' techniques are becoming more sophisticated? Most definitely. There's no doubt that there's lots of money and lots of uh, brain power and lots of equipment and specialized equipment that they are also using. The fact that we are using uh, thermal night vision equipment, we can be sure that poachers are using it also to make sure that they do their job and their job is to try and kill our rhinos. And it's not just rhinos that poachers are after. Recent years have seen a surge in animal poaching for both the trophy and traditional medicine markets. Wildlife crime now ranks among trafficking in drugs, arms and human beings in terms of profit and is threatening an increasing number of species, including our own. I just see two guys coming out of my face and oh. didn't give me any chance. They started to shoot at me. When they shoot, and I take a car as quickly as possible, but the, that bullet, the round, hit my two-way radio. It hit your radio? Yes. Other people coming from different countries, they come here to see these animals. And the more they come here, they make our economy in this country to grow. So if people come and kill this rhino, it's like they're destroying our country. That's why we're trying our best to protect these animals. Apparently rhinos like a good scratch behind their ear. This is their soft spot. So I've been given the task of official ear scratcher. I don't mind. The final step of the treatment is to seal the holes with special putty and wrap up the horns with duct tape. After a couple of days, the tape will come off and the treated rhinos will be indistinguishable from the untreated ones. Because you can't see which ones have been treated or not. It creates an element of doubt in the mind of the poacher. They don't know if they're going to take that risk to, to come onto a property and shoot an animal and then not be able to do anything with the horn. What kind of results have you seen? We've had unbelievable success in, in terms of being an anti-poaching measure. These properties tend to be avoided and the, the poaching shifts elsewhere. If the poaching shifts, uh, we get to treat more and more animals until eventually we don't have to. I'm, I'm well aware that the efforts of this small group of people isn't going to be the end to, to rhino poaching, but hopefully we can make a, a meaningful enough contribution. But really, if you look at where we started, where our goal was just to try and protect one animal, where we are on a total of close to 300, it's still a drop in the ocean, but to us it's an absolute triumph.